Broadcasting live from the WGBB World Headquarters here in New York. This is the Big Fat Joey Show with your host, Big Fat Joey. Vroom, vroom, sin. What's up, Big Fat Joey? Big Fat Joey Show, biggest thing on radio. Good morning, Big Fat Joey. Can you believe it's another Sunday? Another Sunday. Woof. I can't believe tomorrow is March 1st. That's insane, but I'm so happy and I'm looking forward to that warm weather. Well, so am I. You know what? It's just been too cold, too snowy, too doom and gloom. It's just not fun. Yes, the New York area has been definitely dark and rainy and snowy, but um, I'm looking forward to March, and hopefully we do have that early spring. Well, wait, the um, groundhog didn't see his shadow, or did he see? No, he didn't see his shadow, so no shadow means early spring. Well, I'm ready for the spring, the flowers, but by the way, how's your Christmas tree? My Christmas tree is rocking and rolling. It's festooned, as you well know, all things Valentine's. Uh, you know, it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago, so a little birthday festivities on there. And uh, matter of fact, I ordered on Amazon some uh, St. Patrick's Day um, ornaments, I guess for lack of a better word. We're going to keep this bad boy up for another 17 days, I guess. And uh, we'll see what goes on from there. I mean, I maybe try to squeak this out to July. So how many days is it up now? I just can't get over this. Well, we put it up the Friday after Thanksgiving. What was that? The 24th, so 25th of November. So what, 90 days it's been up, give or take? 94 <laughs> oh, days? Say, that was some good trade. Definitely, we definitely got our money's worth out of it. You know, but I think it's. I think at this point it's costing me like 80 cents a day to have the tree up. That is so funny. But it looks good. You know, it brings a little joy and a little happiness to the house. And, you know, luckily the dog doesn't think it's an indoor bathroom. So we're good with that. Well, I'm ready for the flowers. So hopefully spring comes early. Ah, uh, yes, that would be nice. Spring comes early. But then with the spring comes, you know, all the outdoor work. But nonetheless, you know, we need some warm weather, be able to go out and eat. Um, you know, we might try that this year. We'll have to see uh, how this whole uh, virus thing works out. But at least to well, go out and walk about and not, you know, be frozen and see more people. Because right now, the streets out in the Hamptons and, you know, even in Huntington, hey, there's, there's people out, but everyone's just rushing from one door to another. There's no one just uh, strolling and, and lollygagging it along. Well, the Manhattan increased the dining, right? Right. What did they go to? 35% or 50 what do they no, do? I think it's 30, 25, 30. Well, it was at yeah. 25. I didn't yeah. went to 35. Yeah. So, you know, a little more. But, you know, if you have a restaurant that seats 100 people, that's only 35 people. And if you have a restaurant, you know, that seats 50, you're only looking at 17 people. You know, maybe if they want to round up for you, they'll give you 18. I mean, still difficult for, you know, all these restaurant tours. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. But the movie theaters are opened up as well. Yes, I can't believe that. Yeah, that uh, was it 50% or 50 people, I think, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And they're doing that. So that's always good. You know, get, get, get the people going back to the movies. Maybe that AMC stock that's been rocking and rolling and tumbling and fumbling, you know, uh, might, might actually have some, uh, some good news behind it once the AMC theaters reopen up. That's true. That's true. So what else? Um, Netflix. We've been watching Netflix. You know what? I've had Netflix now 10 years. I'd be hard pressed in 10 years if I've watched maybe 10 hours of Netflix. And I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Maybe 10 hours. I, let's say 20 hours. I'll go on the, on the, on the, on, on the long side. Um, but you know what? These past week or two, there's nothing on TV. It's the same old, same old. So, you know, I broke out the the uh the remote to the actual tv to switch over to the different uh you know input and been scanning through uh netflix amazon uh and there's all this other stuff for free um what was it voodoo tv and some other ones i mean i did stumble upon which has become my favorite channel this old house network channel it plays this old house and ask this old house 
24 7 and i love this old house you know we've already had some uh, people on there kevin o'connor the current host of this old house who's on the show uh last year so it, it's been fun but yeah we've been watching netflix well today uh, well actually yesterday i watched um St. Elmo's Fire they had and Pretty in Pink. So I was excited. It was like an 80s flashback. 80s flashback. Found another show. It seems like it only went on for two seasons. Uh, I'm Sorry. Very funny. It's almost like a female curb. Curb enthusiasm. Yes, that was very funny. Cute couple. And then what else? Um, Emily in Paris. That you liked. That, that was a, uh, a younger version of Sex in the City. Just one girl instead of four. Mm-hmm, that was good. And what was the other one with Michael Douglas? Yeah, uh, Sandy Kominsky. I think that's the name of the show. He's a, uh, he's a, like uh, the old man. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's him and uh, Alan Arkin, and uh, you know the Alan Arkin, and in, 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 I guess the first second episode he loses his wife. You know, she passes away, and and Sandy's already divorced, and it's just two older guys looking after each other. It's pretty good. I, I'm enjoying it. We're watching that, and. What else did I watch? Um, well, Kim's Convenience. That was good. You like that? That was good. Conven- and the Karate Kid one. Oh, yeah. Cobra Kai. I, you right? know, I, I like the Karate Kid, the original movie. With Ralph Macchio. I think that was 1994. And, you know, I saw the Cobra Kai, you know, what did it come out? Two years ago? 2018? Three mm. years ago? And I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. And I was like, eh, I don't know. For some reason, whatever promotions I saw of it didn't really grab my attention. But I, I watched an episode or two and I was hooked. Great, great. You know, if you if you love the original Karate Kid, and you know Ralph uh, Macho is a Long Island guy. You know, I believe grew up in Massapequa. I think lives in Huntington somewhere in that neck of the woods. It's gr- great, great, great viewing. Yeah, I think that was your favorite. You said. <sighs> that, yeah, that was my favorite. What else? Um, but the em- Emily in Paris. Yeah, was good. Emily in Paris, and you know. Um, just just been a lot of good stuff, and I, you know, and, I, and like I said, I haven't watched. Netflix in 10 years, maybe 10, 20 hours, and I've already burned, you know, I've already quadrupled, you know, quintupled that in the past week or two, just been watching. And, and you, you know, the, Netflix really has it down to a science. You, you know, the, the shows, each episode just comes on right after the other. You don't have to touch you the have remote. You don't to go to the bathroom. Right. You don't have to touch <laughs> the remote. Goes. It doesn't give you any time to think, that, oh, you know what? I've been watching TV too long. It just keeps. Good. Next thing you know, you're like, wow, I sat down at noon. It's already seven o'clock. Oh, God, geez. I watched, you know, 14 episodes it's like wow this is crazy yeah it does it definitely goes quick but um you no know, it's, it, there's nothing on television so I'm, we're, you're enjoying it i'm enjoying it yeah i mean watching two and a half men on channel 11 over you know midnight 12 30 at night and obviously seinfeld 11 to 12 and but there's really you know the goldbergs uh you know the new episodes plus the reruns mm-hmm. on uh on channel 11 at uh 6 30 but yeah really really enjoying netflix i'm really enjoying what well, yeah once again these internet i guess TV channels, we only have this old house, and there's another one that just goes for the game network, which I there used to be a game show network on cable. I don't know if it's mm. still there. Um, we have a race racing network if you like racing. Um, there's just uh, with the Paramount Movie Network plays a lot of Paramount, uh, they're older movies. I was watching the Odd Couple, the original Odd Couple movie about a month or so ago, that was fun to watch with uh, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemon. Um, and I was watching Girls Just Want to Have Fun with SJP, which was cute. Right, Helen Hunt. Right, SJP, Helen Hunt, that was on. All 80s, I love it. Yeah, so there's a little bit of everything, but I was really shocked of of, of all these other channels. Uh, you know, I, I, I like to watch regular TV. I, I don't particularly mind commercials. Um, I just find, I don't know, some re- I don't know. It just seems more interactive to me with the commercials. Like I said, you're watching Netflix or these other cable channels with no commercials you just your whole day goes you're like what happened you, you just don't know <laughs> what you know what time it is at least the other watching watching network tv you know all right, i've been sitting down for half hour or an hour because another show's coming and then on you have commercials so you can kind of judge the time right and you have commercials the other one you really it really really sucks, like you, sucks in. you in yep, yep. exactly you, you you have no idea what's going on but you know what it's fun it's something different and you know it's uh yeah, you know, wave of the future, I guess. I mean, I, I enjoy it, but I've never really watched it. I'm still just a regular TV guy. I like my TV. I like my channels. I like to know, you know, the deadliest catch is on this night. And um, uh, I feel like uh, there's no gold, new TV. Gold That's rushes on. Is. Right. There's no new TV. Even the radio, right? We're in the car. There's nothing on the radio. No, there's not, no new songs, really. 
That's why all of you should be listening to the Big Fat Joey podcast. Because after I, I, my, my radio show, I post it on my podcast. And you can pick that up on Apple Podcasts. You can pick that up on Podbean, Stitcher, all the major media platforms. iHeart, Pandora, Big Fat Joey show is out there. So, you know, you're cruising around in your car or your home. Ask Alexa to turn on the Big Fat Joey show. What do you oh, pay? you forgot about uh, sen- Selling Sunset. Oh, yeah, Selling Sunset. How can I forget all about that? Because you know what? We just interviewed Mary Fitzgerald from Selling Sunset. I'm loving that show. If you if you like Million Dollar Listing LA, you're going to love Selling Sunset. I love it. Mary was a doll, so that's going to be coming up soon. Yeah, I believe they're going to be uh, hopefully uh, under contract for season number four. Mm-hmm. Uh, great, great show. Selling Sunset, like I said, Million Dollar Listing LA. Just a uh, slightly different spin. I mean, in, in this case, it's a uh, the Oppenheim group run by two brothers, Jason and Brett. Um, it's uh, an all female uh, real estate office. Well, for the show, uh, there are, they Mary let us know there are other uh, team members who aren't on the show, uh, guys and girls. Great but show. It's it's a great show, fun show, and we just interviewed Mary the other day. She's be coming on in a couple of weeks, and she was super fun, super nice. Yes, I love the show. It's fast moving. I love all, you know, you get involved in every character's um, story and life. And it was a great show. And we're hopefully looking forward to season number four. So who do you have today? Wowzer, wowzer. We have, and everyone knows who this man is. We have the one, the only, Richard Rawlings. From Gas Monkey Garage. Richard was super nice to squeeze in some time to speak with us between, you know, we had some holiday um, scheduling going on. And, you know, obviously then the holidays came up. And then, you know, uh, just life gets in the way. And we finally met up with Richard a couple of weeks ago. And he was full of information. And wait till you hear in the interview what's happening with Richard Rawlings and Gas Monkey Garage. You're not going to believe your ears. I'm not going to tell you here because I want you to listen to the interview to hear all he has to say. But he was super fun. He played everyone's favorite radio game, This or That with Sin. All I could say is what a cutie, and he was so much fun. And, you know, he's he's a real car guy. You know, been selling cars, buying cars since he's 14, flipping them. And, and you know, he's, he's a true family man. You know, he's married. He's, you know, his, his dad is ill with Alzheimer's. He takes care of his dad, you know, makes sure his dad gets the best care possible. You know, he's, he's, he's got a heart as big as Texas. And as we all know, everything is bigger in Texas. And, and he's just a great, great guy. And it was a super fun interview. I'm a huge fan of the show. I've been watching it from day one. Um, it's just, you know, and I love how he just does, you know, he, you know, he did that F1 Ferrari, you know, that's, that's, I forget two, 300, 400, $500,000 car. And he picks up a, you know, an old F-150 Ford pickup that's worth about $150. You know, so he's, he's working on cars, you know, from, you know, pennies on the dollar to, you know, hundreds of thousands to possibly millions of dollars and and that's what i love about the show and and he just keeps it fun he keeps it keeps it light and wait to hear what he has next the next iteration for guest monkey garage and richard rawlings i'm super excited to share it with everyone we're one of the first people out there to know what's going on and you are going to be shocked surprised and super happy for the news richard's going to be giving us today i'm super excited and i'm ready to go And also today, we have a great artist. We have artist Teresa, an up-and-coming pop star who, you know, and I I use this phrase a lot, especially with a lot lot of my indie artists, life gets in the way. Once again, another talented musician, when she was young, had the, you know, girlhood dreams of, you know, making music and, you know, being a pop star and, you know, life gets in the way and you're... You know, family, you know, people got to help family, this, that, you know, and schooling. And next thing you know, you need to make, get a job and pay rent. And next thing you know, clip, 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 10, 20, 30 years comes by. And you're like, wow, you know, I, I can't believe, you know, I'm, uh, you know, already in mid-adulthood and I, I still have that desire for, for music. And, and that's what Teresa has done. You know, she's been able to 
get herself back to her true love. And you know, you'll hear in the interview, she actually works in the music industry, so she was never far from it. But her true love is being a performer. And she's super excited to be doing that. And she has a great new single out by your side. We're going to be hearing that as well today. And you know what? I want everyone to go out and support our indie artist. You know, we, ha- we have a, a great record store out here on Long Island called Looney Tunes. They're in West Babylon. They have, you know, like you remember growing up, you know, when they had Tower Records, you go in and hundreds of thousands of records you that just fl- flip through. You know, it's, obviously he's not as big as Tower Records, but it's you know, your mom and pop store. And it, it's just, they have a lot of stuff, a lot of memorabilia hanging on the walls. But please go out and support all the indie artists that are out there because, you know, without them, there'd be no music going on. Because we know on the radio nothing's going on. Nope, same songs, replay and replay. Yeah, and and it's and oof, it's just you know, it's, I mean, where did we go the other day? Where did we go? We we I don't, to ice cream, Marvel. Yeah, we drove out to Long Beach, right? So that, that's a good I don't know half hour, forty mm. minute ride. Nothing on the radio. At one nope. point, I just shut it off. I said I just can't even listen to this. I just rather listen to the. To the hum of the highway on the tires of the cars. Like, there's nothing on the radio. No. And I understand, you know, COVID, no one's making any music and things of that nature. But I don't know. It just doesn't seem like there was much on the radio. That's why you should be listening to the Big Fat Joey Show in your car. Go online. Stream it. Apple Podcasts. Podbean Podcast, Stitcher. iHeart. Pandora. Big Fat Joey is everywhere you want to be. Absolutely. All right. Well, you know what, everyone? I am super excited. Up next is mine and Sin's interview with the one and only Richard Rawlings of Gas Monkey Garage. All right, everyone. Let's welcome to the line Richard Rawlings from Gas Monkey Garage. Richard, welcome to the Big Fat Joey Show. How are you? Hey, man. I'm doing good. Just down here in Dallas, uh, enjoying the warm weather. <laughs> really? Really? You know I'm in New York, so you have to say, how warm is it down in uh, in Dallas today? Well, today it'll be about 60, but uh, just a couple of days ago, I was in shorts and a t-shirt outside. Uh, 60 up here in the dead of winter? Yeah, I'd be in my Speedo, sunning myself in the backyard. <laughs> well, you know, you got to rub it in a little bit. This, this Texas weather is uh, pretty nice. Yes, no, it definitely is. I can't wait. Can't wait for the summer. This... Uh, Doom and gloom. Matter of fact, I still have my Christmas tree up in my house, decorated for Valentine's Day, and figured, you know, try to keep some sort of uh, joyousness in the house because it's just doom and gloom. Can't go out, can't go anywhere. You know, restaurants are closed. You, you know, you got to eat outside and, you know, pay the same exact money for a meal. And so I said, all right, let's, uh, let's call it a day. It's not exactly eating outside weather in New York right now. No, definitely not. Especially, you know, with the cold and then, you know, the rats want to feed off the breadcrumbs on your feet. So it's a whole different, whole different animal. Good morning, Richard. It's Cynthia. I'm super excited to have you this morning. Well, thank you, Cynthia. I uh, appreciate uh, you guys having me on. We, we love the show, Richard. Guest Monkey Garage is one of the best shows out there. And, and I love just how you do it. And, you know, and I remember one of the first episodes and you discussed, you know, how you get cars. And, and, and it's true. You go out there with a bundle of cash and you know you can get that ten thousand dollar car for five thousand dollars but what i want to know is who is richard rawlings and how did you get started with gas monkey garage tv and all that good stuff you know uh richard rawlings is just a a, a texas boy and a businessman I, I grew up hustling and we didn't have much as a kid so uh you know i was raking leaves and then mowing yards and then flipping cars i, I started uh buying and selling cars in high school and worked my way up from a $600 uh, junker to uh, a bandit Trans Am by the time I graduated. So, um, you know, just always had it in my blood. I didn't do cars for life until I started a uh, gas monkey garage. I was a police officer, a firefighter, and then I got into uh, advertising business. And uh, so long story short, 2003, I just uh, decided I was going to do this gas monkey thing. And uh, I thought that, uh, the shows that were on TV were too bravado. And I realized that my wife and kids weren't in the room watching them. You know, they didn't want to see the guys kicking boxes and cussing at each other and dragging pit bulls around on chains. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought that they were missing the family element. When I was young, 
you know, my dad and the other dads in the neighborhood were tinkering on motorcycles and cars. Mom was making burgers. And the kids were playing in the yard, you know. So that's kind of was the brain, uh, the light bulb moment, if you will, uh, before, you know, to start Gas Monkey. And now we've got a good, wholesome family brand. You know, I'm still tattooed and wear a lot of jewelry. <laughs> you know, I just, I got, I got a poodle and I'm, a, and, you know, and, and I hang out and drink beer and play with cars. It's the best job in the world. <laughs> It definitely is. Hey, listen, Big Fat Joey, I've got a little 10-pound Yorkie I hang out with, and all, all my neighbors laugh because they're you know, not as big as Big Fat Joey, and they all have these big monstrous dogs that you know look me square in the eye when they're on all fours, and i got this little little thing that's uh, under my arm, dog. a little foo-foo dog. <laughs> I get it. But uh, now I'm real proud of where Gas Monkeys uh, come from and where it's at. It's uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and you know, I didn't know if I was going to make it a few times. But uh, stuck in there, and here we are. Yeah. So, so what kept you going? Because uh, you know, as all entrepreneurs, you know, it's never smooth. It's never like, oh, I'm going to start Gas Monkey Garage. I'm going to make myself famous, or not even the famous part. Forget about that. I'm just going to make myself money. It doesn't always work that way. For 99 percent of the time, it doesn't work that way. Entrepreneurs, if you look at yourself, or you know, you have uh, Elon Musk, you have uh, Mark Cuban. You look at all these guys, and you know, my, uh, Bill Gates. There's a hundred different failures for lack of a better word to their one or two huge successes so what, what kept you going you know I, I i went broke uh twice like couldn't pay rent sleeping on my sister's couch type broke uh and uh i, I just wasn't going to give up I, I, when i sink my teeth into something I, i'm gonna get it done and uh you know my wife at the time was like give up you know my friends were like give up and i'm like no i'm not you know i'm gonna keep going because the goal was to, you know, get to the point where, you know, we're recognized by the network and, and get on TV. I, I shot all my own sizzle reels with uh, help of friends and uh, was out there knocking on doors, you know, no different than the rappers that made it that were selling their CDs out of the back of their car, you know, uh, more or less the exact same hustle. Just keep going and, until you get there. And then the trouble starts because now you're there, you're broke. And you get the opportunity, and you got to figure out how to make that work. Yes, <laughs> right. yeah, you know, uh, being broke definitely, definitely uh, stirs on the imagination, and, and and definitely puts the hustle into you. Oh yeah, I mean, when we when we finally got the call for the show, it was uh, excruciating because I didn't know how I was going to make the show. You know, I didn't. I mean, I I didn't have enough money in the bank to even you know ramp up to making cars and what have you. So. Um, we were buying and selling and fixing a few and then whammo. Now I've got to hire more people and I got to make a TV show. Where did you get the name gas monkey? Like how did that come about? You know, uh, in one of my buildings, we used to sit around and talk about one day when, when we made it and what, you know, what we're going to call the shop and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, it, it, we would draw on the wall on, on the, you know, and, and it just kind of popped up one day. You, know, you stared at the wall and, those two words kind of came together and there we were. That so, uh, the other part of the monkey is, mm -hmm. is that, uh, the monkey's like that. He, he sucks really. I mean, he'll fling poo at you and he'll, <laughs> you know, he'll, break the, he'll, he'll, he'll break all the, he'll break all the marbles and throw all the dominoes everywhere and just get all crazy. True. But at the end of the day, he's still kind of like, he's still kind of liking, you know, he's like, well, you know, he's so cute though. Right. So, you know, we're built on the, we're built on the guys of being mischievous enough to, uh, freak people out but still likable <laughs> i like it <laughs> now what's your take on today's automotive industry because you know watching your show you're building honking v8s you, you know supercars ferraris one of my favorite episodes obviously is uh the smoking the bandit episode and i had a bandit car uh, my early twenties, I found one, worked on it, you know, did, did some uh, restoration to it, not, not to your caliber, but you know, what do you think about today? The, these electric cars blowing away the, uh, you know, the Porsches and, and the Ferraris. Uh, you know, it's here to stay. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm always going to have a fondness for, uh, uh, internal combustion engines and, you know, just the raw power, but to tell you the truth, you know, electric's where it's going. I'm studying on it. I'm trying to figure out how it fits in my world. And, you know, there's a lot of companies that are selling the chassis, uh, to put under, you know, Camaros and Mustangs and what have you. So the, 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 the I guess the sport of, uh, cars and motorcycles is changing and you're just going to have to roll with it. 
And, and me, I'll be having a foul. I'll I'll be driving a fire breathing dragon and shoot flames out the back. So, <laughs> I don't, you know, but, I, but I will be, uh, you know, having electric electric side to the business for sure. Yeah, it's 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 the wave of the future. You know, you're watching the stock market, all these EV stocks, what have you. You know, blowing up everywhere. But no, it, it's it does nothing like the rumble of a V8. Uh, you know, under your foot when you, when you're driving around. Um, I, I have a, a Grand National. And it's it's fun, uh, and I'm sure you, you know you're well aware of it. But it still doesn't have that rumble of a V8. You don't you know you can't don't really modify the exhaust too much. Uh, but you know, I have friends of mine who have Corvettes and other cars, and man, when you stomp on that, and you just hear it, and you, you you just get all excited. For sure, I mean, and it's always going to be there. But you know, I, I can tell you that a lot of the collecting is is uh, changing. Uh, they, they want the cars, they're collecting the cars, but they want to change them. They want to put chassis under them, where, you know, all the creature comforts at home. A lot of stuff is plug and play now. Right. So the ideology of actually, you know, re- fixing a car or restoring a car to original, I don't know how much of that's going to be happening in the future. Everybody's just going to want to put LS motors in them and have AC and good brakes and right. have that old school look. What's your greatest find that you found and you're like, I love it so much? Um, uh, it, well, it's a car I didn't get, <laughs> but I found the Lamborghini Mira down. I found the Lamborghini Mira 1969 down in uh, San Antonio. I wasn't able to buy it, and therefore it wasn't on the show. So, um, But uh, it's still sitting there, and, and the guy has my number, so hopefully one day I'll get it. And uh, the problem is he keeps waiting, and the price keeps going up. Oh, oh and, that, um, and that's why he's waiting. That's why. <laughs> one of the one of the coolest things I, I got was uh, that I found uh, was a '34 Ford uh, in a barn, and it was pretty beat up and hidden, and you know chickens living in it and all this kind of <laughs> stuff. And I bought it and drug it out of there. And when I, we were going through the car to clean it, inside the uh, glove box was a little pamphlet. It was, it was like a little travel pamphlet or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, folded up inside there was a 1934 $1,000 bill. Oh, wow. Huh? And, yeah, I, uh, I mean, they're readily available out there. You can buy them. Uh, and they're not super expensive. They cost around 1500 bucks. but I would never even thought of a $1,000 bill. The only reason I have intelligence <laughs> about it now is because I found one, and I was like, what in the heck is this? And uh, so I carry that in my wallet now for good luck. Uh, that, that, cool. that is a good luck charm. Yeah, yeah. look at that. So finding all these cars, how do you how do you go about finding it? And 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 I notice you like to say the interweb. Where where did that come from? It's just the term I kind of always called it. So you know, I'm from Texas. We say insure it, seem it, and July. So um, <laughs> it's just another Texas term, I guess. Or uh, you know, it might just be a sign of my uh, lack of intelligence. But uh, you know, in the old days, finding cars was was pretty pretty cool. It, it was a lot of detective work, right? Uh, you, you hear about something and you got to go talk to the neighbors and you're knocking, you know, you're stay, hanging out at the grocery stores. And, you know, I, I used to have a paper route uh, back in my teens just so that I could drive the street and know where all the cars were. You know, uh, I mean, I had a legitimate reason to be cruising the streets in my whole neighborhood. So a guy has a garage door open and there's a 69 Corvette in there. I know where it's at, you know. And uh, so a lot of that kind of stuff. And then, it, then the interwebs came along. You know, it was real good. You had eBay and Facebook and, and uh, Craigslist and stuff like that. And I, used, you know, for the better part of the early 2000s, I made my living off of eBay. I mean, real people selling real cars and, you know, me getting good buys, getting them back to Dallas and, and doing the little work on them and then kicking them on down the road for a profit. Nowadays, it's even harder for the average guy that does this stuff because, those sites that I'm talking about are flooded with consignment cars mm-hmm. and uh, over overpriced uh, 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 dealer cars. If you go on eBay right now, there's probably 11,000 cars, roughly, in the classic car section. Wow. And literally only 1,000 of them, 10% are actual real cars, selling, you know, real people selling real cars. The rest of it are all these large consigners that have talked to these guys into putting their car in uh, their warehouse. They're going to sell it for them. It's going to be great. I'm going to charge you for storage. I'm going to charge you to put it on the net. I'm going to charge you to, to, if anybody calls, I'm going to charge you for this. I'm going to charge you for that. And they just run them up, you know, and 
it's a, uh, it's a bad business model. And it needs to be fixed because there's just no way to search through, you know, 10,000 dealer cars that are overpriced by 30%. Right. And, and, and it sounds to me that the owner of the car all said and done is probably going to get the same, if not a little less money than if he would have just said, and I'm making this up, let's say, you know, 78 band of Trans Am is $30,000. And, and, you know, if he's just sold it for 25, he's probably better off as opposed to consigning because he's probably going to wind up, wind up with 25. Well, it's not only that, you got to realize that car might have sat in that consigner for six months or eight months, getting pegged for two or $300 a month storage yep. and $100 every time it was listed on eBay or $100 every time it was listed here or there. And, you know, when he finally gets that tab and he's and that, let's say the consigner did sell it for 30, hell, he might only clear 22, 23. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not, not a good business model. Well, I love your business model. So tell us a little more about Gas Monkey Garage. You've got the music venue. You've got the bar and grill. What's going on in the world of Richard Rawlings and Gas Monkey? Well, you know, everything is on a dead stop. Uh, the, the music venue we, we shuttered uh, back in uh, March, mm-hmm. and uh, then the bar and grill is, is closed uh, right now until uh, the spring, at least, when we find out what's going on with COVID. Right. Uh, different than the restaurant on the corner, uh, you know, that everybody would go to, uh, we are a tourist destination, so COVID really hit us hard. Um, you know, 60% of the people that walk in the door are tourism. Right. Uh, and with no tourists going in, we had to, you know, we just went ahead and shut it down for a little while and we'll see what happens. Um, and, uh, what have you. But, uh, and then as far as Gas Monkey, I will give you the big news of the year. There is no more Fast and Loud and there is no more Richard on Discovery. What do you mean? What's going on? I have left for greener pastures. I, I kind of climbed, uh, the Discovery Mountain as far as I could go, and uh, they're losing viewers in droves to the interwebs and uh, what's going on there. So, uh, you know, here in about, let's call it, uh, in the next eight weeks, the uh, rebirth of the monkey is going to happen, and uh, we'll see B on a Monday night at our same time slot, and uh, it's going to be a whole new monkey, completely okay. out of the cage, ready to rock. Okay. Letting the monkeys uh, loose. Have- <laughs> All right. I have I have gotten I've gotten out of the cage, you know. Uh-oh. Uh, table, table, table's dead, it's over, and you know we're always innovating at Gas Monkey, and we are going to come out guns a blazing, and it's going to be ten times faster and ten times louder. It is going to be a blast. I am really looking forward to it, and uh, you guys uh, are breaking the news a little bit. It's a little bit out there, but we haven't really gone full throttle. But fast loud. Garage Rehab, Mystic Garage, Simulus and Theater are a thing of the past. And, and where we're going to be able to find... Is, where we, uh, where are you going to be able to find us? Yeah. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be on our own channel on the web. Oh, nice. And, oh. Uh, and, and uh, we are going to be doing things that we were never kind of allowed to do. I was kind of shackled down a little bit. You okay. know, I had a lot of rules. Right. And uh, what have you. So uh, now that we don't have that... Uh, Richard's gonna have some fun because <laughs> the last ten years was a, a little, a lot of fun, but a lot of work. And uh, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be messing with everything that we can. I mean, at the end of the day, the, you know, Gas Monkey and, and, and myself are kind of one of the same. And you know, we we can look at jeans or jewelry or tattoos or art or uh, you know, motorcycles, cars, racing. You know, we're into a lot of stuff, and uh, I want the world to see that part of. Uh, what happens? Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more traveling, getting out in the public eye. Uh, we're going to be crisscrossing the oceans and uh, seeing what's going on in other countries as soon as uh, travel opens up. And uh, it's just going to be uh, a really cool new experience. It's well, uh, completely different than a podcast or a vlog. Right. I mean, we're, we've built our show in our own, you know, pseudo network. It's going to be pretty cool. Well, I'm excited. Well, I'm, I'm super excited because <laughs> cool. you guys already look like you were having a, 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 a barrel full of monkey fun. <laughs> well, it's going to be a, a, a whole building full of monkeys now. We're, we're, uh, we've got some good plans. Uh, we're coming out, and uh, I can't release the name of, of what we've decided to call it or what we're going to call our followers and everything else, but uh, I know that the world's been itching for us because of COVID. There's yes. you know, just no new television and no new mm-hmm. programming. So we're gonna good. we're gonna feed the world here pretty soon. Well, Big Fat Joe is I'm always ready. hungry. I could always use another <laughs> meal. And, and and you know what, Gas Monkey. I, I, in, in my world, I know when people 
have transcended. Because when I told some of my older relatives, I said, oh, you know, I might be having on Richard Rawlings from... Ah! The, that guy with the the beard and the tattoos. He's so good looking. So, there that's you go. That's what the, all the so females and that's what they all said. So if, you, you know, if you're ever looking for you know some 70, 80 year year olds, <laughs> let me know. I've I got a whole line for you. At forty year old, stop. <laughs> well, well, that's that's part of it. I mean, we really do get uh, a, a very diverse group. Uh, you know, from uh, you know, I still have my logo on it for for infants and. You know, and then I have the 70 and 80 year olds that come up and they'll pinch me on the butt, tell me how cute I am. And, you know. and you have amazing hair. Uh, I'm such a hair person and I love it. Well, I, I'm definitely blessed there. And, yes. uh, uh, and, I'll, and I don't think I'll ever lose it because my dad's 78. He's, he's, it, although it is white, he still has the same amount. That's all that so, counts. Uh, That's all that counts. Just, yeah, mine's just turning gray uh, very quickly these days. Yeah. yeah, but it looks good though. My my mine turns skin well, tone, you. if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I know you you have well, ta- you, you have tattoos. What's your favorite one? If you're like, this is my favorite, or like the best memory of one. Oh, it's probably my Cannonball World Record that's on my uh, left forearm. You know, uh, we set the record back in 2007 from New York to LA, so I've got a big time clock on there it says 31 hours and 59 minutes and that record stood till i don't know 14 or 15 yep. i don't remember so it's a cool uh to have done that jay leno had us on the show right after that talking about it and what have you so uh that's probably my most memorable tattoo and 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 how was the, how is it doing a cannibal run is it like the movie which is one of my favorite movies from back in the uh late 70s 80s no no it, it, <laughs> it's not because there's no actual cannonball run like there really was in the 70s right there was groups of people doing it at once now it's just one guy you know one car tried to decide to do it you know or, or a couple it's not a big crazy group you know but the cannonball from what i understand and um you know when how needham wrote that story it was all antics like that they were having a good time and, and goofing off and but they were also trying to beat the record. So it's, uh, it, you know, that, that story is, a lot of the stories in the real Cannonball movie are real. <laughs> this is what people were doing. It, it definitely looks like fun. Now, one of your besties on the show was uh, Dennis Collin. How, how do you know him? Uh, me and Dennis have been friends, uh, best friends for about 23 or 4 years, I guess. And uh, mostly in the car business and riding motorcycles here around Dallas when we were single um, and what have you and in our twenties and thirties. And, uh, you know, he's in the, he's in the Jeep business and the classic car business. So, uh, you know, we, we both kind of play in the same realm and, uh, you know, he kind of took me under his wing when I decided I was going to do this. Cause like I said, I was coming from a, from advertising business and I knew cars, but I didn't know everything. Right. And so, um, you know, he, he really helped me, uh, with my car knowledge from a pricing standpoint and numbers and what have you. So, uh, we've made a lot of money together. It's been fun. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm also a, a, a big jeeper. I got a '97 Sahara that I redid, and it's uh, doesn't get as much. Hey, u- dude, how many cars? Every time I say something, you say you got another car. I'm a car <laughs> and watch guy. You know, I, I, I love cars and I, I love watches, and you know, I, I like to be like you or Jay Leno. Just have a variety <laughs> of different cars. I don't know, maybe, maybe seven cars off the top of my head. And, uh, you know, that's awesome. That's very cool. You know, th- that, um, just, and just enjoy them. It's, it's just funny. I got my everyday little cruiser, my, my little, uh, Corolla that I cruise around in because obviously it's gas and, and, and it's, it's good here. Okay, and, and, that's not cool. That's not cool. That's, stop on that. That's not cool at all. But I did get the sport version. <laughs> I do have the sport version. And, that's, and in the city, it's good for parking. It's good for parking <laughs> and it's got the little red S on it. So, and if and, anyone bangs it up, you don't care. <laughs> well, I do kind of care because it, it is good looking. But, you know, the, the Jeep doesn't get as much use. The, you know, the Grand National doesn't get as much use. Um, and then, you know, the other cars. But it's I'm a car guy. And that's why I, I love your show. And, and, and it's wholesome. Like you said very in the very beginning of this interview, the whole family can sit down and watch it. There's no fighting. There's no, you know, you did me wrong. I mean, we all have enough drama in our own lives. And you'll learn something. I don't need to see your drama. And you learn something. Right. And you get to see. And, and what and I'm, the coolest was when you, you guys got to meet Burt Reynolds, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, I watched Smoking the Band, and anytime it's on the air, how, how was that whole episode putting that together? 
it was really, really cool, um, you know, and uh, I got to spend some more time with Burt Reynolds before he died, too. But when we made the show, it was unbelievable. I mean, here I am on just the craziest whirlwind ride, you know, of this whole uh, Gas Monkey garage. I, I got a own Hot Wheel, you know. Right. I just had Motley Crue play my bar, you know, and now I got, freaking, you know, I'm meeting Burt Reynolds at his house and hanging out with him and, and uh, just an amazing guy. And, uh, and uh, he lived a really kick-ass life. I hope we all get to live like that. And uh, I'll tell you one thing that they did not show on the, on the TV show is right after we quit filming, he goes, hold on a minute. He went in the house and he comes out carrying the hat. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hat. And he goes, Richard, I didn't know who I was going to give this to, but I'm, I said, I'm going to give it to you. Wow. Yeah, oh, cool. like, I got like, you know, goosebumps and almost man tears. I'm like, sir, <laughs> I, I can't take that. I, I said, I just can't take that. He goes, oh, you, I got a big uh, Smokey and the Bandit uh, memorial wall thing and it hangs in there and and uh, it's pretty cool. But uh, that's an amazing, just amazing. So I got one of the Smokey and the Bandit hats given to me by Burt Reynolds. That's, that's, that's awesome. about as cool as it gets. That's that, awesome. that is amazing. And they said it's uh, growing up. You know, me and you were about the same age, and that was, you know, one of the pinnacle movies. And like I said, I always watch it. Um, it's just it's just an awesome, awesome. You never get tired of it. You just never get tired of the shenanigans. And always, you know, seeing that Trans Am do its thing is, is no, always we, fun. And, yeah. And we had so much fun filming it. You know, the little scene where we, you know, became, you know, uh, Burt Reynolds and, and Sally Fields and everything. It, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And, and, and Tom played an. Um, an awesome, uh, I just blanked out the cop. Uh, he did really good with that. Um, Sarah Buford T. T. Justice. Yes, yes, he, Buford T. Justice. He, he, I mean, really, you all did an awesome job. And, uh, you know, 40 years later, it was very, very lifelike from, from the movie. But that's one of my most favorite episodes. Well, uh, Mine too, for sure. Well, speaking of favorite, Sin is chopping here at the bit. She's ready to play everyone's favorite radio game, this or that. Are you ready, Richard? I'm always ready. All right, Richard, here we go. This or that. Fast and loud or sleeper? I prefer fast and loud. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show off. How about monkey bar or candy bars? Oh, monkey bar for sure. <laughs> a, long, a long horn steak or two food turkey? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys or Texas Titans? Dallas Cowboys, that's where I'm at. Of course. Life is a highway or a highway to hell? Highway to hell, let's go. Would you be on the cover of Popular Mechanics or the cover of GQ? Uh, I would rather go for GQ. I would say so, definitely. And if you were to star in a in a movie, would it be called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or Four Banger? <laughs> hopefully, if I get my hopefully if I get my wish, it'll be called Smoking the Bandit. All right, <laughs> all right, we love that Smoking in the Band. You can't go wrong. Oh, thank you. That was but fun. If I have to yours, I'll go with the Four Banger. <laughs> <laughs> They'll make two. They'll make two. <laughs> Now, now, besides being a car entrepreneur, jack of all trades, fireman, police officer, EMT, I understand you love to cook. I do, and you're going to get to see a lot of that with uh, with uh, everything that we're coming up with here in a couple of uh, months. And uh, so I do all the cooking. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I just got through making my beautiful wife uh, breakfast uh, right before the call here. And uh, so uh, you're going to see a lot of me uh, experimenting and cooking and, and what have you. Because to me, when I go to a town to look at cars or what have you, that town always has its own flavor. Right. And I want to experience that flavor a little bit, uh, and then I want to try to recreate it. What's your favorite thing to cook? Something I haven't cooked before. I mean, you know, I, I, I try to cook something until I get it to where it's perfect for me. It might not be perfect for everybody. And uh, then I want to move on. Uh, so... Uh, you know, but if I had to pick a genre, I'm, I'm probably predominantly uh, Texan and barbecue and stuff like that. But then I'll move into Italian pasta. Right now, I'm trying to perfect pizza dough, and it is a freaking mm. pain in the ass. 
Yes, yes. Pizza, yeah, pizza dough. I, I, even when I, do, I buy them in the store, then you stretch them out and they always shrink back. I'm like, I, I'm probably doing this wrong. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know, and, I, and I'm practicing on different kinds right now. Detroit style pizza is having a, a renaissance. And uh, so um, I've got a big pizza oven being installed at Gas Monkey, as a matter of fact, right now coming over from Italy. And I'm, oh, nice. I'm going to do it, do it the right way. But do it the right way and learn how to do it. That's awesome. Well, I also want to know what is one thing in your closet that you're holding on to and you really should just throw it out? Like, what's one thing? Oh, golly. <laughs> how would I answer that? Uh, just one thing that I'm holding on to that I really should get rid of. Yes. I, well, the I wife is like, know, you got to get rid of this. Like, you can't wear this again. But you're like, I love it. Or just an I, any item. Oh, pro, well, it's not, any, it's not an item. It's the item. It, you know, I wear a black ass monkey t-shirt every day. It would be <laughs> real nice to get the t-shirt. You get to change that up every once in a while. Okay, so, okay. Uh, you know, we we have a lot of just black gas monkey t-shirts. So I guess you got to date all your photos because you can't tell. Like, I don't know what this photo is. It's going to be yesterday. It's going to be 10 years ago. Exactly. Well, I, I can only judge by how much gray hair I have. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. That's how I judge my photos, too, how much uh, beige hair I have. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right. That was, that, was, and that was a long time ago. I don't see too much beige up there. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, we're so excited about all these new things coming up. We are definitely, definitely super duper excited. Now, if you could build a car for anyone, and you've built them for a lot of different people, it's actually a two-part question. What kind of car would you love to build, and who would you like to build a car for? I would like to build a, uh, you know, a rebuild, restore, if you will, a Lamborghini Mira, if I could find one to, to do that, too. And as far as building one for someone... Um, I've, I've never really picked that, but some ones have always picked us, okay. uh, you know, but, uh, if I could, if I could do it, I'd have to go back in time and I'd like to build a car for my dad, okay. you know, but, oh, nice. uh, you know, he, he, he always had a toy and, and I, I still have his last toy in my, in my garage. Um, and I'm keeping that, you know, but he's, uh, advanced Alzheimer's and, uh, mm. just, uh, kind of, you know, living in the home and, and what have you. So I'd love to go back in time before Alzheimer's and, and build him a car because, he barely got to see the beginning successes of, you know, Gas Monkey and, and being on TV. And, and um, mentally, he's just not there with us anymore. Yeah. You know, but not I'm, to be a Debbie Downer. No, no, but, no I'm, that's I'm, not, yeah. but don't worry. That's a nice thing. Don't worry, thing. though, because he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm I'm sure deep down inside, you know, my, my mom uh, passed of Alzheimer's as well. So I, I, I know the... The struggle, the you know, the, the you know, it's it's hard, it's hard. But I, I'm sure deep down inside, you know, he, he sees what's going on, and he he can, you know, he he understands how, how well his son has done, and and I'm sure he's ha- you know extremely happy for you. What what what's the car that you I have of that, dad's? Uh, you know, what's that? What was what's the car that you have of dad's? Sixty five Shelby uh, GT. Oh, 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 okay. And, not- uh, you know, so. Uh, it's, it's a neat car, but, you know, somebody asked me the other day, and, and, and I think we touched on it a little bit earlier in the, in the, in the interview, and, you know, what am, what am I most proud of? What have I achieved? And I'm like, I get, I, I'm in a position to be able to take care of my father. Mm-hmm. And he has the best care, awesome. best everything. And there's, there, you know, I am so proud of that that I can't stand it. You know, and I'm also, you know, I have Gas Monkey Foundation, and we try to do as much help for families that aren't in that position as we can right. uh, and what have you. So, um it, it's a lot of it's a it's a lot of joy to be able to know that I'm in that position and and you know if, if people are out there and they feel like it you know Gas Monkey Foundation throw some money because we're we're doing good for families that can't. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, so everyone's listening. You need to come out and support Gas Monkey Foundation because you know what, like Richard just said, not everyone has the means to give their families above and beyond. The, the care that they need and it's and it's so great that you're doing that for dad and i'm sure you know obviously deep down inside he knows what's going on and then you know and listen when you when you get the pizza thing down right you bring him in a, you bring him in a pie trust me i'm sure he'll be like all right here we go let's some pizza time <laughs> everyone loves pizza <laughs> well today's that's national right. pizza day right oh yeah that's right today's national pizza day and i didn't know that that's so yeah, funny man. That's so funny. That is funny. I love it. I'm going to eat pizza now. Yeah. My wife will actually be mad at me because I eat so much pizza trying to perfect this. And she's like, I can't eat like this all the time. And I said, well, I've made it for myself. You don't have to eat it. 
Now, do you like a basic pizza, like a margarita pizza, or does it have like it's a three cheese pizza? Like, what's your favorite, or any pizza? Oh, I'm 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 a loaded pizza guy okay. on thin crust. Okay, uh, you know, but I I really will eat just about any kind. I'm not a big fan of white sauce. Okay, uh, but other than that. You know, if it go, and I'm not a big fan of fruit on pizza either. That's just yeah, stupid. Yeah. Oh, so, the, other than fruit and white sauce, I'll eat just about any pizza you put in front of me. No, no Hawaiian pies for you, huh? Uh, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> now, a, as we wrap up, what's one piece of advice you can give our entrepreneurs out there who are either looking to flip cars or get themselves into business? Well, you know what? I just read a quote a minute ago. Uh, from uh, Elon Musk was asked, what advice do you have to an entrepreneur is, that's wanting to get into business? Uh, you know, and it's like, if you're needing advice, then you don't, then you're not an entrepreneur. So, you know, that, that quote resonated mm. with me this morning. You know, entrepreneurs are self-starters, they're goers, they're getters, you know, but my usual answer to giving advice to the business person starting out or the person starting their business is always go too small. Uh, the biggest mistake that, that, that people make is they get excited about building a business and where it's going to be. And they start too large and they waste their money or their time. And you can't make either one of those back up. So, uh, especially time. So start too small. Mm -hmm. I don't care how grand your idea is. Right. Start small. I like that. Yeah, make it attainable. Well, you have more uh, chance of success starting small, and then you can get a little larger and a little larger, et cetera. You know, you don't start a business and all of a sudden overnight you're, you know, $10 million a year in sales. That's just not how it works. Unless your product is $10 million, and then you might sell one. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you sell one product at $10 million. Well, though, that's, that's definitely great advice, and obviously you've done exceptionally well for yourself. Uh, Elon Musk, I think he's done all right. You know, maybe not as well as Gas Monkey, but he's done all right for himself, Elon. Uh, I got, I got to get him to send me up there. I'll go. Ah, oh, definitely. I plant a Gas Monkey flag on the moon. That'd be awesome. That's it. Get on, get on SpaceX. You, you know? know, you know. Speaking, speaking of Elon Musk, that you, you know, because of Elon Musk, we now have an actual chance of getting into a car wreck in space. Hmm. I never thought of that. I know. It was absolutely 100% impossible before, and now it's a possibility. And, and yeah, you know, that's, that's, yeah, that's a little deep. I never thought of that. Yeah, with Elon Musk and everything going, you know. <laughs> that's cool. Looking to get people living up, uh, up like, and out of space. Yes. One day, that car's going to hit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and long as it does, long as it does, long as it does not come crashing down to Earth, we'll all be fine. <laughs> this is correct. Now, Richard, how can my audience find, follow, and keep up with everything Richard Rawlings? Okay, number one, they want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gas Monkey Garage. They want to hit us up at gasmonkeygarage.com, uh, gasmonkeyfoundation.com, and, uh, you know, all our merchandise is available online. Like every other business, we're struggling a little bit because of COVID, so any uh, manner of uh, support is appreciated, and, uh, you know, we're just going to have a good time. I think uh, there's a lot of people going to be sad that uh, we're not with Discovery anymore, but trust me, when I come out of the cage, mm. it is going to be fun. Well, you know what? I'm sure it is because, like I said before, it already looked like a barrel full of monkeys, and it's an enjoyable show, family <laughs> show, fun show, great cause, great cast, great everything. I'm super excited for the new adventure. So am I. I can't wait. Especially, like I said, you're going to be let out of the cage. You're going to be, we're going to see more of Richard Rawlings in his natural the habitat. Raw, the raw. Richard Rawlings in the raw. <laughs> there we go. I'll have to start working on the, on the roar. I only know how to go. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richard. Thank you for being on the big fat Joey show. I wish you nothing but luck and success and all that you do. And we'll speak soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. How fun is Richard? Richard was super fun. Almost as fun as watching you catching flies right now. You just yawned after you took a big gulp of your coffee. <laughs> I Wait, know. What, what are you catching over there? I need a little bit of caffeine this morning. <laughs> yes, a little bit of caffeine. But it was, what a great interview, really. 
great interview, great insight, great guy doing great and things. And his new project. You know, and his new project. You know, he, he's on YouTube. He's doing his own thing. We're going to get to see Richard Rawlings in the Raw. We're going to get to see how the gas monkeys really monkey it up. And, and, and I've been watching the episodes, uh, you know, Monday nights, 8 o'clock. It's been super fun. And it's great to see, you know, he, he's a thinker. You know, he, he's been a fireman, an EMT, a police mm-hmm. officer, advertising business, paper boy back in the day, flipping cars. So he's always thinking what's the next big yeah. thing. And, and, and that's what I love about him. He's, he's not just content with what's going on right now. He's always looking for the next big thing. Super duper fun interview. And, it, it, and it's just super fun to watch. And I, and I love for the fact that now, you know, it, he's on the internet and, you know, you can watch it wherever you want to be and, you know, just see all things Guest Monkey Garage. Amazing. It was just amazing. I, this was really a fun interview. It definitely was. And, you know, I want everyone to make sure that you also check out, you know, Guest Monkey Garage on the internet and, and follow everything that they're doing in Richard Rawlings. But also, very important, to follow and help support the Gas Monkey Foundation. You know, Richard is, is a very giving person. Him, his whole corporation, Gas Monkey Garage. So check out gasmonkeyfoundation.org and, uh, you know, see what you can do to help them out to keep, you know, the, the, the charity going. Because in, in this time right now with COVID, there are a lot of people who need assistance. And, and Richard is doing the best that he can with his charity and making sure that, uh, you know, the people get the help that they uh, need and deserve. So everyone, please, please, please make sure and, you know, obviously get out there, support Richard, support Guest Monkey Garage, get some of his merch, you know, go online, get yourself a big Guest Monkey t-shirt. They are cute. They are cute. Everyone everyone likes a monkey, especially a barrel full of them. <laughs> All right. Well, up next is my interview with pop star Teresa. All right, everyone, let's welcome to the line pop singer and songwriter Teresa. Teresa, welcome to the Big Fat Joey Show. How are you? Hey, Joey. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Living large, laying low, enjoying this brisk, cold January weather. What about yourself? Same. I got to tell you, just making the most of this January. Um, it's, get, it's cold. It's getting colder, and that's not going to change. So just trying to like somewhat enjoy this winter. It's definitely a different winter than we've ever had, right? Yeah, you know, you, 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 it's the two C's, the cold and the COVID, keeping you in the house. Keeping us in the house and keeping us safe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, you know, it's it, it, it pretty, it, it, it's definitely a different uh, time, you know, being in the house and not being able to go out too much. But it's, there's been a kind of a, also a cozy factor. Um, but I, I don't know what's going to happen when we finally can leave the house again because I might be having some anxiety problems. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back to the real world. Well, believe it or not, we still have our Christmas tree up. I told my wife, I said, listen, we're not going anywhere. We're home. It is, uh, you know, festive. Leave the thing up. And, and actually, it's it's my birthday in a couple of weeks. I said, you know what? We'll, we'll decorate for Valentine's Day slash my birthday, so I'll leave the tree up. And there we go. The tree's lit in my house, and it's nice and festive. Oh, my gosh. I am so jealous. I would totally keep my Christmas tree up, like, so much longer. But I always feel like if I'm, like, still having my Christmas tree up by a certain day, like, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, it, you know, I think it's like my mother in me where I'm like, what are the neighbors going to think? <laughs> uh, but I, I'm a, a big Christmas. I try to have my Christmas tree up early. I try to take it down the last possible day. But I'm so jealous. That is so amazing that you sh- yours is still up. I think what my neighbors would think about my Christmas tree would be the least of my worries from what they think about me. So the Christmas tree is probably a, 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 a good uh, diversion for what they think about me. Actually, I, I, oh boy. I live where I grew up, so uh, I graduated with three quarters of them in high school, and half of them. We, we were all childhood friends anyway, so we all know each other more intimately than just being adults living on the same block. Oh, that's cool. It's kind of like friends on Long Island. Yes, 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 except uh, everyone's got their own house and no one just barges in, per se. Exactly. That's for both worlds. So what I'm understanding is you've had a love of music 
since the wee age of 11, but like I like to say, life got in the way and you're finally coming back to your true love. Just can you give yeah. us a little insight to who you are, what you've been doing, and how has it come full circle all these years later? Yeah, of course, Joey. I mean, I am somebody who, you know, in my younger years, I had dreams and aspirations of being the next Madonna. And I started writing music at age 11. Um, you know, and I always thought that I was going to go to the big city, just like in Madonna's footsteps, and become a big star. Um, and, un you know, unfortunately, you know, I, I had all these big dreams, but life was a little unkind during my teenage years. You know, um, my father was sick. My best friend was sick. Uh, it was a struggle financially for my family. And, you know, I did come out on the other end. Uh, you know, unfortunately, my dad and my friend did pass away in my late teens. Uh, but I, I did get an opportunity. And I'm always somebody who always saw the glass half full. Um, and, you know, everything, I would just keep on growing and growing. But unfortunately, you know, as you're growing up and you're having all these setbacks, your self-esteem kind of takes a back seat. Mm -hmm. So although I loved music and I still wanted to be, I was still writing songs, I still wanted to be an artist, I said to myself, I kind of I, I kind of made a compromise with myself. And I said, you know what? I don't know if this singing stuff's going to work out. I'm going to see if I can work in the, in the behind the scenes. So I started taking some internships, doing some stuff with Jive Records. I worked for Cheryl Crow's manager, you know, and still trying to maybe work on my music. But at a certain time, like, it just was something that didn't, it didn't feel like it was going anywhere. And I was suddenly, you know, so blessed to start a career as a music producer in advertising um, that that was starting to heat up. So I kind of said to myself, you know what? Everything's going great in life. That music thing, that led me to hear all those hundreds of songs I wrote as a, as a kid, whatever, literally stuck them in a closet um, and, and lived my life. And, you know, became very successful in advertising, met a wonderful man who I'm now married to. Um, but two years ago, literally almost two years ago, I was cleaning, doing some post-holiday cleaning and uh, for some reason I came upon some old song lyrics which like were crazy to look at after all that time because I you know I, I kind of put that away for over 10 years and that led me to listen to some of the demos I had worked on in my mid-20s and when I didn't think I was good enough I was actually really great and to realize that later you know, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, like, I, 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 maybe I made a mistake or I don't actually, I think that everything happens for a reason, but there's a reason why I fell upon those lyrics and why that drove me to then ignite this new fire within me to go out there and to pick up the, the songwriting and the singing again. And from that day on, I've kind of been committed to working on my music and in, in two short years, I've gone from, you know, a girl who, you know, was re, you know, re-met her passion to releasing music, doing interviews with people like you, and, and really sharing my story that, you know, I, I do think that everything happens for a reason and our dreams do not expire. So um, I, I want to share my story. I want to share my songs with as many people who will listen. And you know what? I have that our dreams do not expire I love that saying because they don't I mean I, I, I'm I, I, when you just said that for some reason it just clicked in my head your dreams don't expire it's just a matter of timing I mean luckily for you you got to continue to work in the music business where you know I speak with a lot of musicians a lot of indie artists and you know what when I was in my 20s I, I had I had one person actually had a record contract with you know with the company uh, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a record label but you know like yourself finances family things you know, get in the way and they went to work for the next 30 years and now they're back because they have the, the the wherewithal and the finances to support themselves on their new venture but you I, I gotta say I think you're the only person I've spoken to who's actually working in the industry that they've always wanted to 
be in as a performer. Everyone else said, no, I wanted to be a singer, but I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm a vet, I'm a garbage man, I'm an electrician, I'm everything but what I've always wanted to be. But now I'm back. And you know what? Your dreams do not expire. And I, and I love that saying. They don't. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep on going for it. I mean, you know, you, 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 like you, and I actually, I, I was just thinking of this, and this may sound a little corny, a little weird, but like, I never heard anybody went, and I went and I, I tried to, to, to climb that mountain and everything was going really well. And I, then everything just sucked. Like nobody, like everybody who goes for it and just puts in the hard work and goes for it, they land on two feet somehow or another. Mm -hmm. Like I can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow, but I have a good feeling, Joey, that it's going to be stellar, that it's going to be really awesome. And I think that positive mindset is a big part of your success because I, I'm a true believer. I'm an optimistic person. I, I always think, you know, this can be worked out. The best will happen, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, you, you need to be optimistic because if, and I always say it, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? So you, you have to be your, 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 your own advocate if you want to, you know, do as well as you want to do. Uh, absolutely. And you have to find that from within. You know, it, 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 it's, it's very, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to be optimistic. There, there are a lot of negativity, a lot of negative people, a lot of negative things going on in the world. But right. if you're able to kind of dig deep and, and work with yourself and on yourself, that, that really helps fuel yourself to be as optimistic as somebody like me. And I think you working in the business has helped you extremely because, you know, you've always had your, your hand in the action, you know, you kept your feet wet. You know, I, I always tell people, you know, if you're looking to learn how to be a millionaire, do you hang out with the person who makes a hundred grand a year or do you hang out with the person who makes a million a year? You hang out with the person who makes a million a year. Absolutely. You know, do, do you, you want to learn how to play baseball? Do you hang out with uh, Michael Jordan, who's a superstar in basketball, or do you hang out with Derek Jeter? They're both great athletes, but, you know, one knows baseball a little more than the other. So, you know, yeah. you, you need that optimism and, and you need to keep uh, your mind open, which you have. Now, I know coming out February 26th, your newest hit song, By Your Side. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Where did you get your inspiration from? What it's all about? Absolutely. Uh, By Your Side uh, is a song and it's kind of an old kind of saying. Uh, you know, I think that everyone's gone through this in, in their life where you're kind of missing somebody who's not in your life anymore. And, you know, for whatever reason it is, you, you continually think about them. And, you know, this, this song kind of takes a play on it being romantic, but it, it, it actually did start off as a song that's just about, you know, I, I just want to have you back in my life in any way, you know? Um, and I just want to be by your side. Like, I'm, don't, let's not worry about the past. Like, this is all about where we're taking it from here. And I will stand by you no matter what, no matter what happened in the past, we are going to go be together for the future. Um, you know, I, I, I miss, I miss people that aren't in my life anymore and I wish they were here. And I just want them to know that my door is open and that it would be really nice to connect. Yeah. You know what, as you get older, you know, friends, come and go for whatever reason and i forget the same time what um in your life for a reason season or forever if, some, if there's a saying out there reason season and for, or forever something of that nature that people <laughs> somehow some way are intertwined in your life either for reason to help you out for something or just a season for you know, a short term or or for a longer period of time for for life but you know what there's always someone someone's missing and it's great and what i really find about your song is even though it's that impactful, uh, giving people the sense of you know longing and missing others, it's very catchy. And, and I told you, Affair, I think it, it's a, it's a great dance song. I think it's a great club song. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm so, it made me so happy that you said that because I love <laughs> dance. Uh, you know, I love dance music, and like I, I, I can't wait for the day that I will be in a club. <laughs> hanging out with some friends and the song does come on and we can all run down the floor. And if, you know, also, I don't know if you're a Peloton kind of guy, Joey, but I also can't wait for my song to be on 
Peloton on a Peloton ride. Like that's kind of the new dance floor these days. Come on now, the name Big Fat Joey Show. Do you think I'm a Peloton guy? <laughs> I think the name of the show kind of Anyone answers that question. Be a Peloton guy. <laughs> well, if I want to use it as a as a three thousand uh, dollar shirt hanger, yeah, sure. It, it, it'll go next to my thousand uh, dollar uh, treadmill shirt hanger. Boy. Now you know I, I love Pelotons. You know I've been on a couple of my friends have. Them. I don't have one myself. I just have a regular uh, old school Sears and Roebuck one I bought years ago. Just a regular uh, recumbent bike that I have downstairs in the little makeshift uh, gym, and which I'm glad I did years ago because now that we no longer have our gym memberships because we don't go to the gym because of COVID, it's definitely uh, help keep us busy. Uh, you know and help keep us yeah. somewhat in shape. I mean, round is a shape, so I'd like to think I'm, I'm keeping myself spherical for everybody. Now, staying active during this time, like however we can, just so important, you know. Uh, it, I, I notice the days where I, I do try to work out every day, do something every day, uh, but the days that I don't, especially because I'm not leaving the apartment, I'm not leaving, I'm not right. going anywhere. So, like, you know, when you don't, I'm, I'm literally just sitting at my kitchen table working all day because I live in a one-bedroom apartment at the moment. Um you know, if you don't get any physical fitness in, it's kind of like, okay, I only took like 20 steps today. What? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't even keep track on, on my uh, step counter anymore. I use uh, the one on the phone because the phone's always in my pocket. Same thing. I look at it. I think it's like <laughs> negative 20. I'm like negative. Yeah. You slept too much. Get up. I'm like, okay, I guess I got to go off the couch a little more yeah. than, than what I've been doing. Now, <laughs> what genre of music really inspires you? What, what, what's the genre that you look at or that you enjoy the most that inspires you? Pop, 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 pop. I'm a pop girl. Okay. I've always been, um, you know, growing up, as I said earlier, like I'm, I'm really, was really inspired by Madonna, inspired by Duran Duran and Blondie and Mariah Carey. Um, I love music that just feels good that you can hear anywhere. Um, you know, a, a good song is a good song, no matter when it, you know, it, the bones of a song to me are timeless. Uh, so I really appreciate pop music. I, I appreciate a lot of different types of music, but I am definitely a hooky kind of pop girl. I'm, I'm a big pop guy. I'm, I'm your, your top 40 type of guy. I, I enjoy all types of yeah. music, but I'm your quintessential turn on the radio. I'm, I'm not much for, you know, non-commercial. I, even on TV, you know, a lot of my friends say, oh, why don't you get Roku? Or I said, I like to sit down, flick through the channels, see a commercial once in a while, just to hunt and peck for a show. It just doesn't do it for me. I'm, but radio-wise, I'm a, I'm a pop person. I enjoy it. I enjoy listening to what's on the radio. And, uh, you know, like I tell a vast majority of people I speak with uh, as an interview, if you could be only as fractionally as successful as Taylor Swift, I think you'll be all right. I know <laughs> Taylor, Miley, Dua Lipa. Uh, you know, and they're all they all inspire me. These these, these girls are are really freaking talented, and uh, you know Taylor especially is such an amazing songwriter. Right. Um, I, I got I don't know if you saw. Did you see her documentary, The Miss Americana, that was on Netflix? No, but I'm writing that down now, and uh, I might actually use my Netflix for once in the 10 years I've owned it now. I'll have to uh, <laughs> go on it. It's great. It's great, and it really, it's really cool when you see people you look up to, uh, you know, Taylor actually writing her music um, and, and see her process, because you're like, oh, my gosh, like, my process is not that different than Taylor Swift. It's, it's just, you know, it, it, songwriting is such a, a cool art, that for a long time, again, when I wasn't believing in myself, I don't think that I realized that I had this gift. So, you know, then you see somebody who's doing it and you're like, oh my gosh, you kind of do kind of similar things. Um, it kind of keep it, it makes me smile. It makes me so happy to see that like, oh, you know, somebody so successful as Taylor Swift, you know, we kind of have some similarities in how we kind of come up with songs. Now, speaking of similarities and coming up with songs, what is your favorite and what is your least favorite part of the whole music making process okay so i really love when i just kind of come up 
with a song. Like, so I'm a, what they call a lyric and melody girl. So what happens with me is that I usually come up with a little bit of a concept in my head. Um, and in, with that concept, then a melody comes to me. And I then kind of develop the song again in my head. <laughs> and I actually love that. I like, I, I'm working on something right now and you, you know, you don't know where it's going to go. And it, it, it's kind of awesome because you kind of look back on it and be like, Oh, I remember when I was just humming that in the shower and now it's turned into this big thing. So I love just the, the initial, when it hits me, it hits me kind of feeling. Um, I also love when I first hear the first demo of a song that I'm working on, like when I finally get to a producer and they start working on it and, you know, you start hearing it come to life and that's also a, a pretty amazing feeling. Um, but my, my least favorite, and I mean, this is just the reality of the world we're living in and also the reality of how it takes to make music is that things take time and I'm the most impatient gal <laughs> there is even though I'm 41 and I, and you know, just going for it now. Um, I, I'm impatient. So like when I'm working on something and it takes a minute for a producer or a collaborator to get back to me, I'm like, come on. I'm like that little kid who just like, you know, come on. I want to, I want to ice cream now, you know? Like, um, so I, I think that that's my least favorite is like kind of that waiting, that in between um, time. Uh, but I just, I love the process so much. I, I really enjoy and value the time that I get to uh, spend working on music. That, I mean, I, it's, the time is just what it is. It, it, it's all, it's really all wonderful. And, you know, and that's the one thing about, you know, the arts. It, it's one of those businesses where you hurry up to wait. You know, you, you hurry up to try to get the music put together or the movie put together, the TV series put together, but then it has to play out. It has to go out to the masses and then, you know, see where it lands. And for someone like yourself who's impatient, that definitely has to be a very nail-biting uh, time period for you. Yeah, it, it is. But again, it, um, another song I'm working on called Better Things Come to for those who wait, <laughs> you sometimes that the patience yeah, it's all worth it. it. It's all worth it in the end. Now, speaking of other music, what else? So you mentioned you have some other songs coming. What, what else do you have in the pipeline? Yeah. And when could we when could we be looking forward to seeing all this music drop? Yeah. So right now, I'm working on a bunch of new new music. I have music lined up already. That it's funny, like. I have music that I'm like planning on releasing like singles through the year that I had like my quote unquote release schedule. I'm working on such amazing new songs right now mm -hmm. that I'm kind of like, mm, I got to kind of rethink some of this because I'm like really loving these new, these like these fresh jams that are coming out of me. So <laughs> we'll have to rejigger it. But the plan of attack really is to continue releasing singles for the, for the next year or so. Um, I, I'm concepting my album um, that I would love to work on, which is kind of a little bit more introspective um, than some of the music you, you're, I've released as, as well as By Your Side, even though it is kind of a very personal song. I feel that, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm working on um, kind of dive a little even deeper in, in, inside of me and, and in my thoughts and my dreams and all of that stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I just... I, again, I want to just continue releasing music and sharing not only the music, but who I am and my story with as many people. So I, I will be around all year. <laughs> You're not getting rid of me. I will be new Teresa music every other month for the next year. Well, that's great. You know why? Because if any of it is nearly as fun, as catchy, and as mindful as your upcoming release by your side which comes out which drops february 26th you will have nothing but accolades coming your way uh, thank you joey <laughs> now that, that, that's really I, I love that thank you <laughs> you, you are more than well like I said it's a very catchy tune so how can my audience find follow and keep up with everything pop singer songwriter teresa 
Yes. Well, I, you can follow, I'm, I'm everywhere. Um, Teresa with an H, Spotify, Apple. And then uh, my socials uh, for Facebook and Instagram are at Teresa Music Official. My website is TeresaMusicOfficial.com. And you can find uh, on my website, you can find everything uh, you need. You can follow me on Bandcamp and Twitter. So TeresaMusicOfficial.com or at Teresa Music Official for Instagram or Facebook. Well, Teresa, thank you for being on the Big Fat Joey Show. I wish you nothing but luck and success in all that you do. Aw, thank you so much, Joey. It's been a pleasure. Same here. Great speaking with you. I'll speak with you soon. Have a great day. Talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow, so another great interview from another artist who, as I love to say, I've said it three or four times already, life gets in the way, but they made sure they found their way back to their true love music. Well, I'm so glad these indie artists are making new music because, like I said, there's nothing on the radio. So, yes, it was amazing. Definitely was amazing. And we're going to be listening to her new hit single in a few moments by your side. And speaking of buying my stuff, can I have my coffee back? <laughs> now, now, you're, now, 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 you're, now you're dipping into my coffee it's over there. It's still early. We're waking up. Well, I think I mentioned before, you know, a while back, I was having problems with my coffee. Just horrible, horrible, horrible. And uh, got the uh, Nespresso machine, a friend of mine, uh, mentioned it to me. And I'm loving it. It is pretty yummy. Very smooth. Very smooth. It has a little froth to it, like almost like a head of beer, you know, like a cappuccino type of thing. It's a, it's a definitely a good coffee. Hang on. Can I have my... Let me have my coffee back. I, hang on. I want to get a drink of here. I'm fine my coffee. <laughs> All right. I need a little coffee, too. Oh. All right, everyone. Well, up next, by your side. Not a day goes by that I'm not thinking of you. Not a day goes by that you're not on my mind. Time is flying by.
What a great song. Catchy, fun, and this is what indie artists are all about, bringing the new tunes to our ears. What a great song. What a true talent. And that's what, and that's what all our indie artists, true talent. And, you know, like I said, life gets in the way. You know, we can't, you know, can't always, you know, grow up and say, you know, I'm going to go to college or do this or do that, and I want to be a rock star. I want to be a... This, I want to be that, you know. Like I say, life gets in the way. And you know what? But Teresa never let that stop her from doing what she wanted. And more importantly, she, you know, one of the few lucky ones that I've been able to speak with, actually got to work in the industry. You know, everyone else, I, you know, a lot of Indians I speak with, you know, who was a lawyer for 10, 20, 30 years, who was a police officer, who's construction, you know, who's, who's working, you know, a, a waiter, a waitressing job, you know. So they were far away from the music industry, but Teresa was lucky enough to be able to keep, you know, her, her, her feet wet in the music industry and then, you know, obviously now branch out and bring us some new tunes. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. So everyone, make sure you give Teresa a follow on Instagram, Teresa Music Official, and also, you know, make sure you follow and support all our indie artists. Well, I guess it's that time... Yeah, no, yeah, it's that time for me to get another cup of coffee because someone drank all my coffee. I think that's what that is. I was thirsty. I needed some energy. Well, did, did, did you want some gum? Got a sugar cube from the kitchen. <laughs> Wait, drinking all my coffee. So we're hopeful that this week's going to be warm. Yeah, I think every day except Tuesday. I think Tuesday's supposed to, I don't know, with the wind chill? I thought I saw them say like 22. That's crazy. That's but I think the rest of the week is in the 40s. So I guess, you know, don't put that on winter jacket and hat away. Yeah, you're going to still need it for Tuesday. But hopefully, I think that might be it. I'm, you know. That would be nice that we're done with the snow. Yeah, enough of the snow. I mean, and uh, my buddy, my buddy Bill, he was able to, you know, I told you about my Aaron snowblower, nothing but a POS since the day I got it about four years ago, five years ago, brand new. He first snowstorm in december it didn't work he picked it up for me cleaned the carburetor or tweaked it or did what he had to do some magic the magic that only he knows how to do because he's good with all these small engine stuff and that bad boy the last two snowstorms it started on the first pull it's never started on the first pull it's never started on the on the, any pull on any pull <laughs> i've had to get you know it has an electric starter on how to use the electric starter and it's still one start I, I must thank him because this bad boy is actually working. Pull it one shot, boom! That thing is on, and, and that's that's beautiful because that's what it should be. You know, I have a you know Honda equipment, and that all that stuff starts with a half a pull. So thank thank God, you know, he was able to get this going. But hopefully, there's no more pulls because we're going to head into spring. Yeah, no. The only thing I want to do is pull the cover off my hot tub and, uh, and and get into that bad boy and sit and, and relax. The, and then also the grill. Pull the cover off the grill. Pull the cover off the grill because Big Fat Joey's got to grill him up some uh, some Q and have himself some fun in the backyard and get his eat on. Well, I'm ready some for some marshmallows, the sun, a little tan. I'm ready. I am ready like Freddy. Well, you know what? Speaking of ready like Freddy, I'm ready to get out of here. All right, everyone. This is Big Fat Joey here with Sin. Big Fat Joey Show, biggest thing on radio, reminding everyone to make, make every, every sandwich, sandwich count. count. Peace. Peace.